What is up, guitarists of the internet? Today I want to talk to you about outside notes and the idea that no matter what scale you're in, you can play any note you down well please. So you probably know a few box shapes already, like uh, pentatonic minor, natural minor, major, maybe even harmonic minor and some of the modes as well. But those are just supposed to be outlines, okay? You can actually play any note in between any of those scale shapes and the only real trick to it is confidence. These scale shapes are just supposed to be a rough outline of what your song or improvisation or solo could be. The thing that's going to make it a unique piece of art is your selective use of those notes and just opting to use notes completely outside of those shapes as well. Some people would call this playing wrong notes. I'm going to call it playing outside notes because that's a much nicer term. Technically speaking, if you already know the blues scale, you know one of these outside notes. The diminished fifth that goes between the four and the five shouldn't actually be there. It sounds awful by itself. But if you use it in the context of a blues song as like a bridge between the four and the five, it sounds really cool. So what you could do, option one, is to create a really intricate melody using a scale as a basis and then loads of outside notes. That's going to be really hard because you've got to make sure that all the chords played underneath it are fitting within these new notes that you're adding and that's going to get super complicated super quickly. I'm not saying don't, I'm just saying I wouldn't want to have to do that. Or you could just say that this one solo you're doing is going to include this extra note, so you've got to make sure that the chords underneath aren't playing any notes that would uh, clash with it and make it sound awful. That would be a fair enough approach. But what I'm going to talk about today is using outside notes as kind of an effect, the same way you would when you bend a note. So think about bending for a second. You start with an original pitch, right? And then you bend up. Let's say you're bending up a full tone. In between that original note and that full tone, you're going to hit, well, several thousand frequencies in between, but also you're going to hit a note, a half tone between that full tone bend, right? So you're bending two frets, you're going to hit the note that occurs one fret up. Now that note one fret up probably doesn't exist in the scale, but you're still using it as a method of creating tension. And yeah, fair enough, you're doing that through the medium of a bend, so you might not think about it this way, but that is what you're doing. You're playing that note in between. And that's the sort of thing I want to talk about. So we're going to stick with the minor scale today, specifically the A minor scale, and there are three notes I want to talk about. There are actually five outside notes, but we're only going to talk about three of them. So you can find the other two by yourself at some point enjoy that. We've already spoken a little bit about the blue note but let's hear it as well. So remember we are in A minor and we're going to take a quick look at the blue note in case you don't know it already. Blue note is between the four and the five so let me demonstrate one, two, three, four, five. So it occurs there and it also occurs a little bit higher up in this box shape. One, two, three, four, five is over here, so blue note is here. And that's the blue note, so you don't normally play it by itself, because as I said earlier, it's that awful diminished sound, but you use it as a bridge between the four and the five. The next note I'm going to introduce you to, hopefully, is the major three. You probably already know the major three. You probably didn't know that you could play it inside of a minor scale. Okay, there's a couple places this turns up, but there's only really one place I play it, and that's here. That is the sixth fret on the G string. And I usually use it as an extension of the minor three, which is here. So minor three, step up to major three and the root note. And lastly, I want to talk about the flat two, or the Phrygian note. If you can play the Phrygian scale or the Phrygian dominant scale, you should already be familiar with the idea of a flat two. This is basically the same thing. Anywhere there's a root note, it's the fret above. So in A minor, it's the sixth fret of either E string 
and on the D string, it's the eighth fret. So that was the blue note, the major three, and the Phrygian flat two. Let's have a listen to a jam situation in which I throw all of these together, and hopefully it doesn't sound awful. So there you go. As I said before, it's mostly just confidence and having conviction in what you're doing. That means you can get away with it. And if you're really stuck and not sure that you can make this work, just make these outside notes as short as possible. I hope you have enjoyed this lesson. If you have, please give the video a like. Please check out the blog because there are diagrams and all sorts of helpful things on that that could help you with this lesson. Also, if you want to subscribe, that'd be amazing. If you have questions, please do leave a comment and I will see if I can get to them. I will see you next time. Toodaloo.